Welcome to Northland Basketball, Northland Basketball. presented by Sports Zone Radio. Exclusive coverage of Navajo Nation and White Mountains varsity basketball online at sportszone123.com and on the Sports Zone Radio smartphone app. And now it's time for Northland Basketball. Everybody, welcome in to Northland Basketball. Welcome to our broadcast location here, courtside at uh, Winter Rock High School, the home of the Fighting Scouts and the host of the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament. It's presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. And we are about set to see the number two seeded Page Sand Devil Boys take on the number three seed Monument Valley here in this one this afternoon. And it's day two, it's the semifinals. We welcome you, everybody, and in just a moment, we'll check in with Stephen Young, the public address announcer. And there he is. We're going to check in and we're going to get the starting lineups from this one here this afternoon at Window Rock High School. This game features the Monument Valley Mustangs and the Page Sand Devils. Let's meet today's starters. For the designated visiting team, the Monument Valley Mustangs. Number zero, Ralph Gray. Number one, Uziel Flores. Number two, Jaden Redhouse. Number three, Kerry Nash. And number four, Sean Shorty. The Mustangs are led by head coach Randolph Gilmore. Let's meet the starting lineup for the designated home team, the Page Sand Devils. Number one, Joey Benali. Number two, Bryce Williams. Number four, Max Reed. Number 30, Talon Herder. And number 33, Tyree Stingley. The Sand Devils are led by head coach Justin Smith. Today's officials have been assigned by the AIA and they are Andy Harrison, Brian Ekoff, and Mike CB. Hey, there's your announcement of the starters. And uh, boy, it sounded great, didn't it? How about that? Those golden pipes of Stephen Young. He's the athletic director at Monument Valley, and he is the public address announcer for this one here today in Window Rock. Great atmosphere. Why aren't you out here, good people? Let's get out of here. Join us out here. Get a ticket and, and get involved. The opening tip. Controlled by the Page Sand Devils, and we're underway with this broadcast of Northland Basketball at the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament, presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. My name is Floyd Simmons, and uh, game two today on this Friday is the boys' semifinal. It's the number two-seeded Page Sand Devils, number three seed Monument Valley, and a second chance basket will be good for Joey Manali and the Sand Devils. They open up the scoring. We are underway, everybody. In this broadcast of Northland basketball. Well, the Monument Valley boys are going to get a shot. And it's no good. And it's knocked out of bounds. Back to the Mustangs for an inbound. And it comes in over the top to Uziel Flores. The, the blind defense by... By the big fella, Tyree Stingley. He read the eyes and the body language of Yuzio Flores, and he was able to get that steal. Never saw it, did he? And yet he was able to take it away. So the Sand Devils, an early 2 0 lead, and they're going to get a chance right here to add something. Talon Herder can't do it. 
Might have been partially tipped and blocked there. Ralph Gray, the third, ends up with the basketball, and he'll bring it across for the Monument Valley Mustangs. Well, one of the officials graciously offered me a throat lozenge before the game. He said, how's you? How do you feel? How do you, boys? Would you like a, would you like a, a cough drop? And I said, uh, I, I said, well, I brought a whole bag. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. something like, you know, you're going to need it. Yeah. I could barely understand you last night. So, I mean, it was, it was not the most, uh, let's just say, uh, complimentary <laughs> comment from the official. But he didn't mean any harm. He's just, you know, he's an official. You know how these officials are. They're, they're like cops. I mean, cops have no emotions or feelings. They're tough guys. They're tough dudes. They're sheep dogs. They're taking care of all you sheep. I'm not a sheep, okay? I'm just saying. I'm not a wolf either. Not a wolf. You know the whole thing. I'll uh, I'll join uh, ranks with the sheep dogs. How's that? Let's get it going, everybody. Here after that, after the uh, Sand Devils uh, get the ball and now miss a three-point try from Stingley, it's going to roll out of bounds, and the Sand Devils will have it for an inbound coming up here, first quarter, and a slow start for these two teams. Got a chance to talk to. Randolph Gilmore, the head coach of Monument Valley, before the game as his guys get a steal. Sean Shorty takes it away. Up to Jaden Redhouse, to the free throw line, back outside. Yazeel Flores guarded man-to-man -man by Tyree Stingley. In the lineup for the Sand Devils, Yazeel is the shortest guy on the floor, and the tallest guy on the other side is, is uh, Stingley, and he guards Yazeel defensively. <laughs> You got the tallest guy on one side guarding the shortest guy on the other side. That just shows you how much respect you have to have for Uziel Flores. What a, an amazing player Uziel is. Always has been, but played in the shadow of his older brother and, and the great Al Brandon Brigel. The brother is Roberto Flores. Played in their shadow the last couple of years. Now it's his team. Sand Devils get a first bucket. Out of Talon Herter, his first points of the game here early on is now double team comes out to Uziel Flores. There it is. There's the tallest guy on the Sand Devil team and the shortest guy on the Monument Valley team. And there's, there's your defensive assignment. Coach, uh, Coach Justin Smith, who is uh, just a fantastic defensive tactician, uh, tactician as a coach. Monument Valley are losing in backcourt right there. Monument Valley, a little body language, a little, a little frustration. Coach Smith got to be a little bit happy with his defense, and he just very casually indicates the offense he wants to run. Just a little flash the four digits up there. Nothing demonstrative, nothing too loud at the moment. And let his guys go, go to work. So talking about Coach Gilmore, his team's uh, on, he had team, team on defense, and you know, he says, you know, we've been getting better and better and closer and closer playing the Sand Devils, and he feels like, you know, what, if they'll just do what they have to do assignment-wise, you know, he likes his chances to win this game today. And I would agree with that because that team of his has been getting better and better as they've gone along. Jaden Redhouse picking up a personal foul, by the way. Team foul number two on Monument Valley a little earlier, Yazeel Flores. Got his first foul. And on the other side, two team fouls. One of those for Joey Benali, the other one for Tyree Stingley. Stingley gets one, misses one. At the foul line. Five nothing early lead for, for Monument Valley. Flores, two defenders come out on him. Just watch him when he gets the ball. See what kind of magnet he is for defensive personnel. They have changed up the defense, by the way. So now Stingley is guarding Jaden Redhouse, who gets open in the corner. Stingley got a little too. He went out to try and help. And we'll get a travel on a rebound by Kerry Nash. But Stingley went out to help. That left Jaden Redhouse open in the corner. So a new defensive assignment on Flores, on Uziel, and I think the... Uh, I think the new defender on him, I think it was Ralph Gray the third. I'll check that again when they go to the other end of the floor. Here's the inbound for the Sand Devils. And bringing, uh, bringing it across is Bryce Williams. Williams pulls up the dribble. Preston Ross is in the game, and he delivers a pass to Stingley. 
Now Williams on the angle, and uh, boy, Ralph Gray with a quick hands knocks his dribble out. Scooped up by Jaden Redhouse, and Monument Valley has possession again. I was uh, talking about the wrong. Ralph Gray couldn't cover Uziel because they're on the same team. Uh, look at the pull-up jumper, and it was uh, Sean Shorty defensively trying to stay with Uziel, but not able to, and finally, finally now the first points of the game took more than a half a quarter to get them. Monument Valley gets the first bucket. And it's 5-2, to 5-2, to two, the Sand Devils in front. Sean Shorty on the drive, tried to deliver to Ross. And Ralph Gray swoops in there defensively to, to grab it, and then he st stepped, on the, uh, stepped on the baseline. So the ball goes out of bounds to the Sand Devils for an inbound pass. And Sean Shorty will, it's not Sean, that's Max Reed. You know, they're both, the teams are both red, I'm sorry. It was Max, Max with the shot miss. Flores brings it up, drops it off. Here comes Monument Valley with the runner. Not the best shot selection for Ralph. And he had to try, try and save it in, couldn't do it. And the Sand Devils get the ball back. Five to two, the early lead for the number two seeded. Page Sand Devils. And how about the rankings? The 3A rankings look like this in the state. Sand Devils expect to have a first round playoff home game. Right now they are the number 10 seed in the tournament. The first eight seeded teams all get first round playoff buys. That would be the number one ranked Valley Christian Trojans. Number two, Gilbert Christian. Number three, Yuma Catholic. Number four, Holbrook. The Holbrook Roadrunners at four. Good job, Delmar Johnson coaching that team. Boy, they are not big. I mean, they just are not big. And somehow they, they just do it. They just know how to get the most out of their talent there at the Holbrook Roadrunners. So. Coach Johnson's team is number four in the state. Northwest Christian, number five. ALA Ironwood is number six. So let me look at that. In the top six teams, one public school, right? Is that the correct count? In a Monument Valley. Personal foul on Jaden Redhouse. Jaden's got his second foul of the game, and I think Jaden is going to leave for a while. He does. Jaden will leave the floor for Coach Gilmore with his two personal fouls, and entering the game is Latrell Begay. For Monument Valley, 2.06 on the clock here in the first quarter. A 5-2 lead. And it's going to stay that way. Well, get another shot for Stingley. And this time with a bump, he still manages to get the shot to go in. And that's his first field goal. And Coach Gilmore calls a timeout. Timeout called for Monument Valley. We're going to stay here, everybody. Remind you that the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament is presented by Choice NTUA Wireless in a 7-2 a lead right now for the Page Sand Devils over Monument Valley. Let me continue my thoughts on the rankings here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five of the top six ranked 3A boys teams are private schools. You've got that one public school, Holbrook at number four. And then Snowflake is number seven, Winslow number eight in the rankings, the last we knew. But Winslow lost last night to Payson. And Winslow might lose their first round by, which might go to Chin Lee. Chin Lee Wildcats might jump to eight. Maybe Page. Page is the number 10 team. I definitely think Winslow lost themselves a first round playoff game with the loss to the Pace and Longhorns. Chin Lee nine. Right now, if it doesn't change, Chin Lee would have a home first round playoff game. They might just get a bye. Page Sand Devils look to have a home first round playoff game. As you take a look at a shot missed and then a Kerry Nash soft little jump of the one-hander from the right side. That was well done by, by Kerry and he's got his first basket. Only the second first quarter field goal from Monument Valley at this point. Minute 20 remaining in the quarter. Oh, blocked that shot. Kerry Nash 
Kerry's kind of a shot block uh, expert, isn't he? Kind of a specialist in that. Well, you see him do that a few times. He's got great anticipation, and he's got those really long arms of his. He got to the high point. Turned that one completely away. It almost looked like he could just grab it, didn't it? But it looks a lot better when you slap it. Talon Herter across the paint. And Kerry Nash makes another play on defense right there with the steal from Monument Valley. Kerry's game has gotten better and better. You know, the and he has always started out as a good basketball player, but he has turned into a, an excellent player for Monument Valley and you can follow his trajectory as a player and it's kind of like the same with the Monument Valley team so we get a blocking foul let's take a look at the block shot again yeah and right to the to the to the top of the jump send it away there for Monument Valley's defense and uh-oh second foul of the game on Joey Benali Three team fouls on the Sand Devils. They slap an inbound pass out of bounds and give a reset to Ralph Gray and the Mustangs. Low scoring first quarter. Not just Monument Valley, but Sand Devils have managed just the seven at this point. 40 seconds left in the quarter. The dribble drive, stop. The defender didn't jump, so Yazil said, oh, I'll give it a shot. Might have actually had a better chance at making that shot if the defender had had, had done what Yazil was trying to do. He was trying to get him off his feet. And there's going to be a Ralph Gray foul. He grabbed a hold of... Nope, nope, nope. Sorry about that. I thought we were going to get a foul, but the official deferred to the official down on the baseline who said that is a jump ball. So the Mustangs have it. 15 seconds left in the quarter. Yazeel, 10 seconds now, and he's going to dribble it off his foot out of bounds. Took a while to go out. They're going to say, they're going to say that uh, Jackson Smith got a got a piece of it, but he didn't. I'm not, I'm right here. I got I had the perfect angle. The officials, unfortunately, none of them had the angle I had. They they need to give me a whistle. And let me call some of this stuff. Three three seconds. Yazeel goes behind the back, got a shoot, and it's rejected. He tried. He tried to make it happen, but Tyree Stingley. Taking up some of that real estate in the key, and he was able to reject New Zeal's shot attempt. And our score seven to four, everybody. Second quarter on the way, the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. With Choice NTUA Wireless, you can work, stream, surf, and play with the full power of our broadband service. We have expanded our network for more coverage and improved internet plans for your home. Visit one of our Choice NTUA Wireless locations nearest you to get started. Give us a call at 928-730-2273 or go online now to choice-wireless.com forward slash broadband and order your home internet connection today. Choice NTUA Wireless. Navajo owned, Navajo proud. Holbrook Family Dentistry is a proud partner of Sports Zone Radio's Northland Basketball. They've been serving Holbrook and the surrounding area since 2000, and they cheer for all our local teams and love it when the North succeeds. Holbrook Family Dentistry's three dentists are all general dentists from our local area, so they can perform most type of procedures in-house. They pride themselves on their ethics and kindness and genuinely love working with the communities of Northern Arizona. Come see us at Holbrook Family Dentistry on Iowa Street in Holbrook or call 928-524-6854. We're back. We're live, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our broadcast of Northland Basketball presented by Choice NTUA Wireless and a semifinal game in the 3A North Region Tournament. Here comes the inbound for the Sand Devils. Bryce Williams to Jackson Smith. Preston Ross out there on the angle. He's got the ball. There's Talon Herter. The other of the five Sand Devils to start this second quarter is Tyree Stingley. They'll find him with a pass. And we'll get an offensive foul. Trying to set a screen for Stingley was Bryce Williams. And Williams is whistled for his first foul of the game. So back into the action, everybody. Thanks for joining us here from Winter Rock High School, the Fighting Scouts Event Center. And I'm going to, uh, I don't know if we can get this shot or not right here. This right here, if you can see it or not, it's called a challenge coin. 
And uh, challenge coins are awesome. I've got a handful of them from different people. Normally, it's the military that gives these out, oftentimes law enforcement. This is a challenge coin. You can't see it up close. Maybe we'll show it to you later. It's beautiful. And it's from the United States Military Academy at West Point. I'm going to tell you why I've got this here in a moment. Monument Valley able to get the opening salvo. Hey, there's a military term, salvo. And get their first points of the second quarter. Latrell Vigay out there. And he gets, the, he gets the points right there, making a 7-6 to six game, 7-6. to six. Sand Devils in front of Monument Valley. So I was given this by a gentleman before the game. And, uh, you know, he, he, he was trying to get my attention and approach me when we were about ready to start the broadcast. And there was a, there was a, a sense of urgency that I just said, I need to find out why, why this, this guy needs to talk to me. And so I did. Now, I don't know where he is in the stands right now because I'd like to get a, a, a shot of him if we can. His name is Jason Log. Jason's here from the Windrock area. He's a, he was a fighting scout at one point. His wife is Sherry Log, and Sherry's from Monument Valley, so <laughs> you, got, uh, you got that rivalry going on in, in the family. But Jason is the father of a young man named Cole Log. Cole Log, and Cole is currently attending the United States Military Academy at West Point. And I have the highest regard for the young men and women that attend our military academies. I love the military in this country anyway. And uh, there's a lot of military service in my family. I personally didn't serve, but a lot of my family members have. And I, I, I just have a lot of respect, regard, and love for our U.S. military. And I have just a, a, another level of appreciation for those who undertake to attend our military academies. Now, the other thing is to go to a military academy, whether it's the U.S. Military Academy, the United States Army, that is, as you watch Talon Herder get that basket. But whether it's uh, the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, whether it is the Naval Academy, which also provides United States Marine Corps officers, or whether it's the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, or even the Coast Guard Academy. It, it, it takes so much. It is such a, an accomplishment. So you watch the assist on a great pass from Tyree Stingley to Talon Herder. Talon's got the basket and a couple of quick ones in a row for Talon. 11-6, Page on top. It is so, so uh, such an amazing accomplishment for a young person to receive an appointment to the Military Academy. And, uh, and so I just want to say to Cole Log, the young man that's attending their class of 25, class of 2025 at the U.S. Military Academy, if you're out there, Cole, listening or watching, uh, congratulations on your accomplishment. And, uh, and uh, great, to, great to know that you are one of the sheepdogs out there watching over the rest of us in this great country of ours. And to, to, Cole, uh, to Jason Log, his father, who presented me with the challenge coin, Jason, I will cherish this thing and appreciate that you took the time to say hello. He did, by the way, to our production team. He complimented the job that we do, said we do a great job. And uh, you and I on this team, we all know that it's a team effort that for Simmons Media and the Sports Zone and what we do. we got a great team. And you guys and gals, Jessica, deserve a lot of credit. Deserve a ton of credit for what we do. Thanks to Jason Log. Yeah, let's get back to the action here. Bryce Williams on the sideline. Sand Devils, they'll swing it. And there is a drive by Max Reed. Max with the left hand. Was, just couldn't quite curl that up there. He wanted con he wanted a, a acknowledgement of contact from the official who said, nope, no foul there. And from, from the next county, over, that's Eusebio Flores. He was in the other zip code when he released that one from way out there. And uzi has got his first three today. Got the screen at the top. I'm going to estimate that was about a 25-footer for Flores a moment ago to give uh, his team, the Mustangs, a much, much needed three-pointer. Ralph Gray to try one, and Ralph will connect for the Mustangs. Back-to-back -back threes will go a long way toward your success. And now Monument Valley grabs the lead in the game. The Mustangs on top, 12-11. to 11. 
halfway through the second quarter. There's a drive and a runner, and it's off the glass for Bryce Williams. Down into Monument Valley's hands. Not great shot selection right there. And that'll give the Mustangs a chance to build on a, a little mini lead that they have gotten here in the first half. But Flores unable to do that, accomplish the task. And Bryce Williams controls it for the Sand Devils. To Jackson Smith on the angle deep. Ralph Gray covering him. Max Reed on the drive. Reed going in, knocked out of his hands. That'll be two shots. And the guy that knocked it out, that is uh, Tepler Holiday. Holiday has come into the game for the Mustangs, and he'll register his first foul right here. 317 on the clock in the second quarter. The 3A North Region Basketball Tournament. Semifinals underway right here. Choice NTUA Wireless presents the tournament. And we'll grab us a time. Let's uh, grab a timeout here. Let's grab that page. The video page, uh, Sand Devils video from Choice Wireless. We'll run that for you folks and back in a moment to continue in the first half of this broadcast of Northland Basketball. Give me an F. Yes. Give me an A. A. Give me an F. Give me a D. D. Give me a D. D. Give me an E. E. Give me a B. B. Give me an I. I. Give me an L. L. Give me an F. What does that spell? Sand Devils! Who's gonna win? Sand Devils! Who's number one? Sand Devils! There's Max Reed at the line as we come out of the timeout. Hey, look at the gentleman right there with the, with the glasses, the sunglasses. That is uh, Jason Log. He is the guy, and there's his wife next to him. I believe that's his wife, Cherry Log. If not, somebody's got some explaining to do. But there's uh, Jason Log, and he is the... <laughs> he is the... <laughs> he is the guy that gave me the challenge coin. His son, Cole, Cole Log, attending the United States Military Academy. Jason, thank you. I really appreciate it. Whistle, and there's a foul off the miss. It'll be two shots. Two shots on the way. The guy that committed the foul from Monument Valley is Sean Shorty. Hey, there's a shot of the president of the Navajo Nation. That is Boo Nigren attending the festivities today. While Tyree Stingley hits the foul shot. Make it a pair for Tyree. He's got five first half points and pulls his team in front here in this one. 14 to 12. Downtown, it's no good. Sand Devils get it back. And the Sand Devils get the lead back a moment ago on that. On the foul shots. Here they go. Max Reed. The drive and the shot. Talon Herter, the rebound and the putback. Talon has eight points now in the game. It's Kerry Nash. He's guarded by Jackson. Gives it up. And Yazil Flores goes, goes tall on the run and gets the shot off the glass. Flores undaunted, unfazed by the two taller defenders trying to prevent his access. He got the basket and he gets a rebound right here. Let's see if he decides to challenge again. Yazil Flores will bring it up. Dribble between the leg to it again. Walks it back, no five count yet. Stingley giving him some room. And a 
and a screen. He got a couple of guys put the ball screen out there for him. You got, hey, listen, you can't screen Stingley a little that easily. It takes a couple of guys. He'll grab a rebound off a miss from the Mustangs. Here come the Sand Devils with the basketball. A minute and 14 now left in the first half. Drive, shot, and might have uh, might have rushed that one. Tyree, he gets up. He took a pounding there on the uh, on the pavement, and but he hustles back, rushes back, not in time. Ralph Gray from the corner. That's another three for Ralph, and another lead for the Mustangs with 48 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, Tyree's a little bit hobbled, a little bit banged up. He went down hard a moment ago. The Mustang, I was going to comment that the Mustangs weren't taking advantage of the of the numbers they had. They were going five on four with their offense on that last possession. And I thought, attack the basket, right? The big guy is slow in getting back. And, uh, you know, you've got the numerical advantage. And just then, Ralph Gray hit a three <laughs> from, the, from the corner instead of attacking the basket. So what, what do I know about this game? Other than uh, I know how to sit here. Make some announcements. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Stingley screened off of Flores. He gets some room to shoot, and he hits one with three seconds left. Stingley has it on the inbound. Can't get it away before the buzzer. How did you like that? You see Flores, when you're not the tallest guy on the floor and you grew up that way, you have to be resourceful, and that's resourcefulness. He got the screen, he escaped Stingley, and then the help defender, Jackson, he got by him, gave himself the space and the time to make the shot, and look what he did. Beautifully done to close out the second quarter in the first half. Yuzil Flores deserves another look from our outstanding production crew. Well done, Yuzil Flores. And Monument Valley takes a 20-16 to 16 lead in a halftime. Over the number two seed in the tournament, the Sand Devils, Monument Valley, the three seed. Well, folks, we're going to grab a timeout. We'll come back and break it down for you on the halftime report in just a moment. 20 to 16, Monument Valley. This is the 3A North Region Tournament semifinals presented by Choice and TUA Wireless. With Choice and TUA Wireless, you can work, stream, serve, and play with the full power of our broadband service. We have expanded our network for more coverage and improved internet plans for your home. Visit one of our Choice and TUA Wireless locations nearest you to get started. Give us a call at 928-730-2273 or go online now to choice-wireless.com forward slash broadband and order your home internet connection today. Choice and TUA Wireless. Navajo owned, Navajo Navajo Proud. What's your style? Classic, farmhouse, yeehaw, antique, contemporary, European, bonjour. The Furniture Gallery, located in Snowflake, are the experts to not only help you discover what makes you, you, but they'll do it with your budget in mind. The Furniture Gallery doesn't just sell furniture. They help you turn a house into a home where families laugh and celebrate, share a meal, and create lasting memories. At the Furniture Gallery, they'll do whatever it takes to make you a customer for life. Holbrook Family Dentistry is a proud partner of Sports Zone Radio's Northland Basketball. They've been serving Holbrook and the surrounding area since 2000, and they cheer for all our local teams and love it when the North succeeds. Holbrook Family Dentistry's three dentists are all general dentists from our local area, so they can perform most type of procedures in-house. They pride themselves on their ethics and kindness and genuinely love working with the communities of Northern Arizona. Come see us at Holbrook Family Dentistry on Iowa Street in Holbrook or call 928-524-6854. The team at Beam and Will Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for beam and well drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with beam and well drilling. 
If there's one player on the field that outperforms the rest, it's Perkins Cinders. Like any all-star, they put in the hard work by sourcing, sorting, and delivering all things dirt. Concrete materials, gravel, cinders, topsoil, mulch, and more. With over five decades of knowledge and expertise, manpower, and a whole lot of horsepower, Perkins Cinders will help you score that huge win with your project. Serving the entire White Mountains at PerkinsCindersInc.com. Get a load of this. What can you do for that special Valentine in your life? How about take them out for a romantic steak dinner at Cattleman's Steakhouse, followed by two movie tickets to the WME Theaters. Then let them know their name is in the hat to win a Valentine adventure they will never forget. Premium VIP front row tickets to Blake Shelton live in concert with special guests Dustin Lynch and Emily Ann Roberts. And And if it couldn't get any better, add $1,000 cash. Happy Valentine's Day. If you have a broken windshield, call the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent and treat your Valentine to steak dinner, the movies, and a shot at front row tickets to see Blake Shelton live in concert and $1,000 cash. Call today. 536-597-Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. Woohoo! Welcome to the Mountain Mobile Halftime. A complete first half breakdown of tonight's Sports Zone Radio Game of the Week broadcast. This is the Mountain Mobile Halftime. Well, I guess we're back, everybody. I guess we're back to, to break it down on the halftime, on the halftime report here of the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament. Semifinal game in this one, and uh, Museo Flores shot. Hey, there's the president of the Navajo Nation again. There's, uh, there's Boo Nigren, and uh, he's in our vicinity. He's, he's right nearby. Are we going to get a chance to speak with him? Guys, do we know? Do we get a chance to talk? There's uh, some other broadcasts. He's uh, going to join the broadcasters right next to us. One of the local radio broadcasters. Uh, talk with them for a bit. Maybe we'll get our opportunity to speak with the president of the Navajo Nation, Boo Nigren. Well, 20-16 uh, to 16 is our halftime score. Monument Valley over the page. Sand Devils. Boys semifinal. The girls are going to come out there and warm up a bit. Sand Devils, uh, Sand Devils are going to take on the Chinle Wildcats in a girls semifinal after this game. In the boys game, well, you saw that Yuzio Flores shot right at the end of the quarter. Wasn't quite a buzzer beater, but it was a, quite a shot. There's Ralph Gray delivering a three on your replays as well. Ralph hit a pair of threes in the second quarter for Monument Valley. The guy that leads the scoring for the Mustangs is Yuzio Flores. A pair of threes and 10 points overall. Ralph has six points. Kerry Nash has had the hardest working two points you're going to see out of, out of a player in a half because he did a great job for the team and, uh, and got two points out of it. But that, that might sound like a minimalistic effort. It isn't. He played so well for the team in quarters one and two. So Carey, a good job. And then the other two points for the Mustangs were collected by Latrell Begay. For the Sand Devils, still trying to ignite their offense. Talon Herter leads the way. Talon's got eight points. Tyree Stingley has five points. And interestingly, only one field goal. That's it. He's made three foul shots. One field goal in the first half for Tyree, who had 34 points, I believe, yesterday. Was it 34 for Tyree? He had a big, big game yesterday. Let's see, Joey Benali with two points, and Max Reed has the single other point from that first half for the Sand Devils. Coming up after this game, girls' semifinal, number one seeded Paige Sand Devils going to play the number four, Chinley Wildcats. See who gets to play Window Rock in tomorrow's girls' championship at 3 o'clock. Later on tonight at 7.30, it is the number one seeded Chin Lee Wildcat boys, and they'll take on the number four seed Ganado Hornets. And the winner of that game will take 
will uh, have a chance to play the winner of the game we're watching here now, either the number two seed, Page, or the number three, Monument Valley Mustangs. Let's grab a timeout, everybody. Final timeout. We'll return for the second half in just a moment. We'll continue our coverage from Window Rock here in the 2024. 3A North Region Basketball Tournament. It's presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. What can you do for that special Valentine in your life? How about take them out for a romantic steak dinner at Cattleman's Steakhouse, followed by two movie tickets to the WME Theaters. Then let them know their name is in the hat to win a Valentine adventure they will never forget. Premium VIP front row tickets to Blake Shelton live in concert with special guests Dustin Lynch and Emily Ann Roberts. And if it couldn't get any better, Add $1,000 cash. Happy Valentine's Day. If you have a broken windshield, call the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent and treat your Valentine to steak dinner, the movies, and a shot at front row tickets to see Blake Shelton live in concert and $1,000 cash. Call today. 536-597-Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Laughs can be like people, a little fun and a little unique. Who doesn't love a good guffaw? And the snort? That will always be a classic. Then there's the wheeze. Nothing like the imitation of a dying vacuum cleaner to make your day. The Furniture Gallery is committed to helping you find what makes you, you. Not only will they match your style, they will do it with your budget in mind. The Furniture Gallery, located in Snowflake, will help make your house into a home. And they'll do whatever it takes to make you a customer for life. The team at Beam and Will Drilling is like a great football team. They work hard, they work as a team, and they play to win. Their reputation is second to none, and they proudly call the White Mountains their home, even though they complete projects throughout the entire southwestern United States and beyond. No project is too big or too small for Beam and Well Drilling, so when the time comes for you to punch a hole in the ground, remember the White Mountains' top well drilling team, Beam and Well Drilling. Call anytime, 928-205-7647. Go deep with Beam and Well Drilling. Teams are back. Warm-ups are completed. And the second half of this, boys, semifinal in the 3A North Region Tournament is about to, about to get underway. I want to tell our producer, Derek Simmons, before you leave, Derek, get a close-up on this if we can, okay? Because I'm very proud of this, and it's a, it's a thing of beauty. The challenge coin that I got, the U.S. Military Academy challenge coin, as we get set to bring you back to Page, taking on Monument Valley right there, number two seated Page. Number three, Monument Valley. Can you? Yeah, grab a, re grab a replay on this, and we'll have this at some point. But uh, you got that right there? Check that out. That, that challenge coin right there from the U.S. Military Academy, that is a thing of beauty, thing of beauty, and I'm proud of it. And I'm grateful to the to the Log family for for gifting it to me, and uh, thank you to their son Cole Log for his uh, his current service in the military academy and his future service as a commissioned officer in the U.S. Army. There is a miss by the Sand Devils, and Monument Valley will take over the basketball to start this second half. Everybody. The 3A North Region Basketball Tournament presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. And Kerry Nash must have overheard my comments at halftime talking about how that was the, you know, that's the hardest work in two points. You know, you're going to get out of a guy from that first half. He played so well in so many ways. And now he hits a three to start the second half scoring for the Mustangs. They lead 23 to 16 over the two seed. Sand Devils have the ball at the top of the key. Talon Herter, right side, Max Reed. You got Talon Herter, Max Reed. Now Bryce Williams wearing jersey number two right there. Talon gets it back. He's wearing number 30. Joey Benali, jersey number one. As the shot clock is going to be reset on that shot miss by Joey Benali and a rebound to the Mustangs. And the, uh, the fifth of the second half starters for the Sand Devils and their coach, Justin Smith. That fifth character out there is... Number 33, Tyree Stingley. Tyree is one of those guys that, you know, he's got a future plan at the next level in basketball if he wants it. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, just looking at him, his frame, his size, his athleticism. Doesn't he have a future playing, uh, playing football if he wants as well? 
may not want to. He's got, got a family member, I think a first cousin, if I'm not mistaken, playing in the NFL. And he gets a rebound right there. And he's a little banged up. Tyree is, uh, you can see, he's not 100%. He hit the floor pretty hard earlier, and he might have just got himself an elbow or something right there. Oh, hey, Jessica's here. And the Sand Devils have the basketball. Talon Herter at the top of the key, and he just has it taken right away by who? Kerry Nash. Kerry's played so well. And Kerry said, <laughs> Talon just got, he just got a little, uh, maybe a little uh, lazy there with it as he's just holding it. And Kerry goes, oh, you know, it's right there. Might as well take it away. There it is. See it again. Great job, great hands. Kerry Nash defensively for Monument Valley and a good job by our production team again. Again. Bryce Williams stops at the top. Back outside. Joey Benali with it. And he'll give it back. Play catch with Bryce. This is Max Reed. Max is the, the penetration specialist for this team. That's what he does. Max gets it in hand. You know he's going to be driving. That one rolled off. Thought that was going to drop in for him. Score stays at 23-16. Monument Valley in front of Page. I met for the first time briefly a moment ago, just before the second half began, I met the president of the Navajo Nation, Boo Nigren. How about that shot by Yuzi Flores? Boy, Yuzi. Amazing, almost magical skills that he has. And there's a steal for Ralph Gray. Ralph? Gonna miss it anyway. He's gonna get called for the travel. Kinda kinda stuttered with this dribble right there. You'll see it right there. Yeah, he kinda had trouble with it. Yeah, that's that's a good call by the official. But it was a good play by, by Ralph. Did you see the the, uh, the the Sand Devil player just seem to grab his jersey and hold him right there? See if I had my whistle, if they would give me a whistle from my spot, I could I could I could blow a whistle right there. Because that should have been a Sand Devil foul. And I could have I could have done my part, helped him out, but for whatever reason, here I am with no whistle. And 425 remaining in the third quarter. Yuzi. Trying to back the defender, Bryce Williams down. Bryce able to force the pass back outside. Now Jaden Redhouse, the dish to the baseline. Carry Nash spin, fade, shot, good for Carry. Yeah, Carry must have heard me. Because he's starting to wake up offensively out there. and He's starting to get in the scoring column. He's got seven now. And the Mustangs have done all the third quarter scoring in this game with seven points. And that's going to stand for a little longer because uh, Benali's shot. No good there. Did uh, Flores get popped in the mouth right there on the rebound? Might have. 27-16. MV. See if we got another massive audience out there watching as I check the numbers. Yep, got a pretty big audience out there checking in for this broadcast coverage from Window Rock. Thanks for, thanks for spending the time, everybody, with us on your mobile device or your computer. Maybe you're casting it to your TV. Anybody out there casting to the TV? Hey, Joey Benali's got three personal fouls now for the Mustangs. That's trouble. Let us know on the uh, live chat. Give us any comments you want, but... How do you do that? Who, who, who's doing that? Who's putting it on the TV? And I like to think you're getting outstanding picture quality. Got a great network here at Window Rock as you watch Sean Shorty's effort. No good there. Tipped out. Page will get the ball, and uh, Jackson Smith is going to return to the to the lineup, take Benali off the floor with his three personal fouls. Well, I don't know what's going on. J JT out there says, uh, easy, everyone. Floyd going to shut down chats. I don't know what. I haven't looked at the chat, so I'll, I guess I'll go check that out in a moment. But, yeah, we'll shut the chats down if we, if we have to. I mean, I don't know what that's re in reference to. Jaden Redhouse, third foul. Look, you got to keep it. Uh, you got to keep it family friendly. And you got to keep it. A little loose up there, okay, with the comments. And what I mean loose is, uh, you know, not uptight is what I mean. Monument Valley. Let's see, Amber Benali says, watching on TV right through the YouTube app says great quality. All right. That's what we like to hear. 
Thank you. That is what we like to hear. Uh, Trace Trace says thank you for for broadcasting, watching on the on the 75 on the 75 inch, really on the big big screen. There's Yuzi on the drive, and he gets fouled. And Bryce Williams is the guy that fouled him. Yuzi's got an opportunity to shoot some foul shots now. Williams has two personal fouls. Yazil Flores. And that one is good. Well, listen, uh, we are aware of uh, some uh, legends in the in the audience here. Okay, El Brandon Bajos here. Roberto Flores in the house as well. So as we get word that uh, it looks, does it does it look good on the 75 inch screen? That's what I want to know. That's what I like to know. There's a runner. There's a shot. Oh, not going to go in. Rebound, Kerry Nash, right there. Monument Valley has the basketball out to Ralph Gray, and up the floor it goes. How does it look on 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 a 75-inch screen? I will tell you that we broadcast at 1080p, okay? 1080p, which is as good a resolution as you all is as, as almost any broadcast you find out there. In fact, a little-known secret: if you know anything about what 1080p means, that is a broadcast standard. Many, many national broadcasts that you watch out there, professional and collegiate broadcasts, many, many of them are broadcast at 720p. That is still a standard with many broadcasters. 720p, and I'm talking about network broadcasts. So 1080p, and a lot of them do 1080p as well. I'm not, we're not special in that way. But uh, we, we try to give you the best quality broadcast we can from our originating location so that you hopefully get something good. Hey, Bryce Williams has personal foul number four in the... No, that's three. Three, three fouls. Don't want to don't panic you too much. And I think Coach is going to bring him out of the game. Preston Ross will check in. And he does get in, and Bryce Williams leaves for the Sand Devils. See, uh, somebody said here, streaming via Apple TV, the quality is superior to uh, somebody else. Great job and love the commentary. Desiree Jones says that. Well, I hope the commentary is okay. Can never quite account for how it's going to be received by the person on the other end. But all right, here's a shot from the corner and uh, Carey's shot. The rim out no good. Jackson Smith pulls it down for, for the Sand Devils. I see a comment about politics or something out there. Leave politics out of it. L listen, uh, we're, we're not going to discuss any politics here on the broadcast. I mean, I'm a very, in my personal and private life, very outspoken person when it comes to political things, political things of a political nature. I believe we all should be, but that's certainly not the direction we take our broadcast work. We don't. You may or may not know my political party affiliation. Which, by the way, is independent. I'm a registered independent. Because that's exactly what I want, is an independent mind. But no, we won't talk about politics here on the, on the show, the broadcast. If we, are, if we have any particular elected official that does join us on our broadcast at any time, we don't talk politics. That we're not going to do. We've had U.S. Senators, State Representatives, presidents of the Navajo Nation and other political figures that do step in and, and join us. And you know what? They are elected. They are representing a number of people. And if they're in the House, we're going to give them a chance to, to talk with us. Final seconds of the quarter right here. And from the corner, the shot is going to be, that's going to be no good. No good at all. And that's how the quarter ends. And how about the Mustangs? Boy, defensively, didn't they do a great job? They limited, limited Page to two points. That's it, two points in the third quarter. It's looking, for, looking good for Ralph uh, Randolph Gilmore and his team, Monument Valley, as we go to the fourth period. Stand by, everybody. This is Northland Basketball, presented by Choice NTUA Wireless. 
With Choice NTUA Wireless, you can work, stream, surf, and play with the full power of our broadband service. We have expanded our network for more coverage and improved internet plans for your home. Visit one of our Choice NTUA Wireless locations nearest you to get started. Give us a call at 928-730-2273 or go online now to choice-wireless.com forward slash broadband and order your home internet connection today. Choice NTUA Wireless. Navajo owned, Navajo proud. Not only does Perkins Cinders dominate site excavation, driveway building, and underground utility installation, they operate cinder pits and mines where they are literally crushing materials year-round. Don't just finish a construction job, crush it. Perkins Cinders, helping you get a load of this. Let's see, uh, somebody streaming, Ramona streaming on the 75-inch says the quality is awesome. And she says, thank you, and we say you are welcome, Ramona. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on these on the, our broadcast coverage of these games from Winter Rock High School. I want to uh, mention our, our officials as we get the fourth quarter underway. The officials in this one include Andy Harrison. He's on the baseline right now, overwatching the activity there. Along the right sideline, which would be the, the near side, that, right there, that gentleman on the near sideline, that is uh, Brian Ekoff, and then the third official is Michael Seabe. Uh, it's Brian that just whistled his, blew his whistle, and Rolf Gray is the guy that got nabbed on the other end of that with the personal foul. There is uh, Brian Ekoff. Let's see the other officials out there. I mentioned that uh, Andy Harrison and Michael Seabe are your other two game officials for this one and you know as they really always do doing a great job drive and Bryce Williams misses but Stingley is there and Tyree has too much needed points for the Sand Devils start the fourth quarter Sand Devils scored I mean just minimalistic they had a lead at the end of the first quarter they had seven in the first quarter boy look at all the contact on that and the battle and they're going to fight for it on the, on the deck there right in front of the Sand Devil bench. That was an, just a next-level effort by these two guys. Knocked out, contact, no whistles. And the official said, well, you know what? They're both going. They're both equally at it. They're both taking a shot at the ball. I love it. And uh, Yuzi not backing down. Stingley not giving up. That was a great battle. And again, look, if it's a loose ball, though, you know, you can argue maybe there was some contact. There was a timeout. Zagan will stay here. You might argue there was some contact right here at the beginning. Watch that right there. A little elbow, whatever. But once the ball's in the open court, if there's been no whistle, we both have an equal opportunity at the basketball. And that's the kind of effort right there from two great basketball players in the North that makes their teams what they are and gives them the, the chance they have not just to win a tournament like this one, the 3A North tournament, but give them a great opportunity to succeed at the next level in the state playoffs. There's Mo because Mo knows. Mo Draper, the MVF, the most valuable fan, because Mo knows. Because Mo is Mo better. We need more Mo. We need Mo Mo. They get back to the inbound after the timeout. I just, boy, that fired me up. That great effort right there by Flores and uh, and Stingley. I liked it. You get a whistle. And uh, Sean Shorty picks up the foul. It's a non-shooting foul. There's Yuzil Flores. Last year when he played in the shadow of his brother, Roberto, who plays at Northwest Indian College now in Washington. Played in his shadow and the shadow of Al Brandon by Joe. Two of the all-time greats. Two guys that could be on the Floyd Simmons Northland basketball Mount Rushmore. Might possibly be somewhere in that crowd there behind Coach Gilmore. There is Uziel with the hat and Al Brandon next to him. Two legends of Northland basketball. Ralph Gray, by the way, two fouls now in the game. But Yuzil Flores played in their in their shadow last year. 
Because, I mean, you know, because Roberto and, and uh, Al Brandon. I mean, I think that's all you need to say. But imagine, because he was just about this good last season as well. Imagine if he had an opportunity with that, that duo to be as featured as they were. Um, imagine that with that team would have been, because they were so good, got to the state championship game. Bryce Williams just picked up his fourth foul of the game, and uh, Coach is going to have to relieve him of duty for a while. 6.20 on the clock. He's not reaching yet. Coach Smith going to not quite go to his bench yet. But again, four fouls in the game on Bryce Williams. And he's going to continue to guard Flores very close. Well, Coach Smith knows a lot more about the game than I do. But I, 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 I'm so scared to lose Bryce Williams at this point as you get personal foul on Joey Benali. Three shots coming up for Ralph Gray. You know, the kind of coach I'd be, I'd be so terrified right now losing Bryce for the rest of the game that I, I think I would be... Oh, by the way, that's Joey Benali's fourth foul. So that pair of guards for the Sand Devils, four fouls each. Joey Benali, Bryce Williams. I'd be so terrified to lose either one of those guys that I'd be like, okay, I'm not, you're not guarding Flores. You guard somebody else, or I get you off the floor for a while. Because i got to have you in the final moments of this one. Coach Just, Justin Smith has won state championships as both boys and girls coach at, at Page. So... He knows a lot more about his rotations and taking care of business in these closing moments of a close game than I do. And Ralph Gray there at the foul line. First is good. Second is also good. Big shots. These are critical shots for the Mustangs as they grab a, their first points of the fourth quarter and uh, take a 10-point lead right now. Clutch foul shots by Ralph. He's got nine overall points in the game. Flores has 14. Kerry Nash with seven for Monument Valley. And they're going to get it back right through the hands of, of Bryce Williams. Took his eyes off the ball. Do you see it right there? Just for that quick last second, what do you do? What do you do about it? He was planning his next move. He just maybe he planned a little bit too early. Gray. Feed, Red House, rejected, and now fouled. Looked like Tyree Stingley was right in front of him to commit the foul. That'll be three in the game on, on Tyree. The Mustangs playing fantastic basketball, and, and kind of like last year, I mean, they were good all year long, but, you know, I would interview, and I had plenty of opportunities to interview Al Brandon Bijo because of the great season that he was having. And, you know, I asked him a couple of times along the way, and he just kept talking about how they were, they, they kind of had some reserves. They were not showing it, everybody what they had. They weren't playing at ultimate and peak potential. And he made it sound like it was intentional that they weren't doing that, that they were building up, that they were waiting to the final dramatic moments of the season to start to you know, elevate their game to its highest potential. And you know what? That's exactly what they did in making that playoff run. Remember the huge, the 40-point win in the playoffs over the, the Coolidge Bears? How did that happen? How did they beat the Bears by 40 in the playoffs? Do you remember how good that Bears team was? Multiple college-level players on that team and, and all the size that they had? I don't know how they beat them, but it was a part, part of that whole kind of maturation process of the team and the growth of Monument Valley last year. And you know what? This Mustangs team this year, a completely different makeup. And yet, and yet take a look at them. They're kind of getting there, right? And this, this performance tonight, they haven't beaten the Sand Devils this year. 0-2 in the regular season against the Sand Devils. And they are five minutes and 24 seconds away from not just beating them, but playing in the 3A North Region Championship. And they won the North Region last year, that tournament victory for them. The whistle and a foul, and a, a big and one coming up. It was uh, Kerry Nash called for the foul. Monument fans here 
not happy about it. And uh, Coach Gilmore, probably not happy either. He just called a timeout for Monument Valley. We're going to see what they do at the foul line here in just a moment. We will grab this quick timeout, everybody. Back in a moment with more Northland basketball from the 3A North Region Tournament presented by Choice and TU Way Wireless. Holbrook Family Dentistry is a proud partner of Sports Zone Radio's Northland Basketball. They've been serving Holbrook and the surrounding area since 2000, and they cheer for all our local teams and love it when the North succeeds. Holbrook Family Dentistry's three dentists are all general dentists from our local area, so they can perform most type of procedures in-house. They pride themselves on their ethics and kindness and genuinely love working with the communities of Northern Arizona. Come see us at Holbrook Family Dentistry on Iowa Street in Holbrook or call 928-524-6854. Live coverage for you from the Sports Zone on the Sports Zone Radio, Facebook, and YouTube channels. Presented by Choice NTU Way Wireless. Somebody out there a moment ago was asking on our on our YouTube chat. Somebody was asking about the playoffs. What will we do in the playoffs? We don't know what we'll cover in the playoffs. We can only cover one game at a time, unfortunately. And so on those nights when there's games everywhere, when it's a girls' first-round night, well, we're going to cover, we're going to pick a game, we'll cover one girls' game. When it's a boys' first-round night, same thing. And uh, second round, same thing on that Friday, Saturday of the second round. And then we got all of the quarterfinal games in Prescott Valley. We'll have every one of those back to back to back to back and all that, uh, you know, on that Monday or Tuesday from Prescott Valley, okay? So we do have that for you. Mustangs bring it up. Jaden Redhouse from the feed from Museo Flores. Jaden delivers first basket from the field for Jaden today. And a nice answer from Max Reed. Max with the three. Big basket, seven points separating. And Flores is, yeah, double dribble. Flores tried to feed Jaden. Redhouse underneath. Struggled to gain control. And he, you'll see the double dribble right here. There's there's a dribble and there's a dribble. That's what the official looked at, right? He grabbed that. It was a little awkward. It Maybe not the best. Hey, by the way, get a shot of uh, the President Boone Nigren again behind that scores table over there. Guys, get a chance. Because President Nigren is sitting right next to his predecessor in office there. There is... Uh, the president, President Nez, Jonathan Nez, and the, he, of course, I, I don't believe the title is former president. I believe once you're the president, you get to carry that title the rest of your life, I, I believe. You're not maybe the acting president. That is Boone Nigren, but the two presidents there, the current and the previous, are both together behind the scorer's table as you watch this ball go up the floor, and the Mustangs are going to give it up. 36 to 29. 355 remaining, and we'll get a whistle that will send Tyree Stingley to the to the foul line. Oh no, offensive, offensive, and Jaden Redhouse. That's why he bounced up. He bounced up a little uh, extra hop in his step right there because it was whistled on Tyree. And guess what? Tyree's got four fouls. Joey Benali, four fouls for the Sand Devils. Bryce Williams has four fouls as well. And we've got a lot of a lot of game left, a lot of basketball. Flores turns in. Come on, man. That come on! He's too good! He beat three defenders in the paints. And you know what? You saw it coming the whole way. If you're a defender, you saw you saw that thing coming the entire way and couldn't stop it. Flores trying to, to ice this game for his team. Williams on the baseline, able to get the shot. Bryce Williams, and he'll go to the free throw line as well. After you take a look at the... Uh... Hey, there you go. There's, uh, there's Boone Nigren. There is Jonathan Nez. Adversaries during the election, and uh, two men with a lot of experience leading the Navajo tribe right there. Talking. And there is Bryce Williams 
Much needed foul shot for the Sand Devils. That was uh, Sean Shorty, by the way, a moment ago that picked up his third foul. There's a whistle. Another foul. And I think Tyree Stingley is done for the day. He is. Tyree can't believe it. He is. He can't believe it. Sometimes you just let it, sometimes you just let the uh, the atmosphere speak for you. Tyree gone, I mean, you could see that there was, when three other guys picked up four fouls, the third one at the 350 mark here in the fourth quarter, you knew that it was gonna be trouble soon. Tyree is gone for the balance. And the Mustangs will try, try and see if they can Hold on to a six-point lead. The rest of this team, they're going to scramble like that right there. Benali with the great play. He's got to be careful with his four fouls. Max Reed back outside. Benali launches. The three is no good. And it's a rebound for Sean Shorty in Monument Valley. What a battle. What a great game on day two from the tournament. That's why we love these tournaments. The drive and the blocking foul on, on Jackson Smith. And he can't believe the call. He's got the what, what did I do, what did I do call going on. We'll have a, a replay look of some kind here so we can determine. Let's see here. Here it is. Smith comes over to Phil. You be the judge out there, folks. On which direction you go with that, with that whistle. You're gonna got, it's, it deserves a whistle. You've got the emphasis of the past few seasons on uh, offensive player control fouls. The official decided sliding over like that and the timing and, and all that. He did not, he did not reward that. And Flores makes both foul shots. A timeout with 2.30 remaining in regulation. We stay here, production crew stay right here with it. And uh, Let's see here. Any other questions that we need? Uh, see, somebody said, uh, big shout out to the Sports Sound Floyd and his crew. Thanks for the best sports broadcasting on the Navajo Reservation and surrounding schools. Stay safe. Thank you, uh, Deco Van. I think I'm saying that right. Nicole reminding us all that El Brandon plays basketball at Navajo Tech University. Yes, that is true. Roberto Flores is playing. Oh, I see. Somebody said that Roberto's team has games today and tomorrow. I don't know about it. Lorenzen, good question. I see. Somebody said, I see Quentin Thomas. Hey, Quentin Thomas is in the house, production team. See if you can uh, find him as he's sitting with Al Brandon and whistle. More contact. Another foul. Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, Jackson Smith, Bryce Williams, Joey Benali. Is that Quentin right there? Who are we looking at? I I didn't see. Didn't quite see the. Uh, didn't quite see the. What was going on in the screen? Had to get back to the action. We are back, and Max Reed has it. Let's see if Max, he likes to drive. And there's a dish, but he kind of lost the handle for a bit. Oh, Tate in Arizona. There's another, another Northland basketball legend. I didn't see Tayden in the picture. Minute 45 remaining. Hey, one of these days, we're going to be able to have like a old timers game or something. We're going to have, we're, we're going to be able to. You know, a reunion game from some of our legends. Maybe we should do that during the All-Star. You know, we're, we're, we're talking right now, facility-wise, about where to play the Northland Basketball All-Star Games, everybody. Probably first week of June. Can we count on you being there? Can we count on you getting there? If we give you enough time, can you make it to our All-Star Games? If if we can pre-sell pre enough tickets to our All-Star Games in June, we're going to do something like, we'll do like a truck giveaway or something. I'm, I'm not kidding you we got to pre-sell enough tickets to make that worthwhile, but 
if we can, we'll do something like that to the folks, for the folks as you watch Max Reed get the bucket right there. Big shot, big make by Max after the takeaway. So can we count on you folks out there to, to buy some pre-sale tickets for the Northland Basketball All-Star Games? Oh, there's Tayden right there with the light blue shirt and the classic Caesar cut. You gotta love the Caesar cut. Hey, tomorrow, I'm gonna ask publicly here, tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, they're gonna do the 3A North Region Cheerleaders Competition. I think that's what they called it. It's at 10 o'clock and family and friends have asked, are we gonna live stream that? Well, that wasn't part of our plan. It wasn't discussed ahead of time. However, to our production team, if uh, Julio, are you going to be in town? If That's going to be up to the availability and uh, well, availability of our, our production team. Julio, Leonard, Jessica, if you guys can uh, can do the live stream, then uh, then we'll have it. We'll have it for all your cheerleader you know, parents and so on. Do you want to do the uh, comments, Sandy? Jessica, we were just going to kind of just let it let it go. The problem, there is a problem with us doing it. There will be a problem with whether or not we, and Derek over there knows exactly what the problem is. You know what the problem is, right, Derek? Problem with whether or not we can live stream the cheerleader competition. This is going to stop play for a moment. Timeout with a minute three left and a six-point lead. The problem is that if too much of that licensed music that you hear in the background that they use all the time too much of that plays during our broadcast, then they, they block our broadcast. YouTube and Facebook both do. So, hey, there's Megan Moore, the athletic director from Page High School right there. And there's some, some cheerleaders. So we talk about cheerleaders. Thank you to Choice NTUA Wireless for their sponsorship of our broadcast coverage from Window Rock High School, the 3A North Region Basketball Tournament. Big thank you to Holbrook Family Dentistry. They serve the Navajo Nation. And they serve the Navajo Nation with a lot of regard, respect, and care, and love. Holbrook Family Dentistry, everybody. So, as I'm thinking about it, we may not be able to carry that cheerleader competition tomorrow here for the simple fact of it's going to take them five or ten minutes before they block our, before they block our uh, broadcast. The only reason that we are able to carried these game broadcasts with that music playing in the background that you hear is that we we actually talk over it most of the time and for most of it and uh, if we didn't do that if we left it playing for too long we would get blocked hey how about the steal from max reed and the basket this game ain't over yet 52 seconds left inbound stolen and a foul sand devils hopes for a championship, staying alive. Bryce Williams going into the line. And the Boo Birds came out. They didn't agree that Jaden Redhouse and his fourth personal foul was the right call. We'll see the replay right after the first of two shots coming up for Bryce Williams. Two possession game. So the first foul shot, not going to happen there. Take a look again, Bryce Williams for the Page Sand Devils. Missed them both. Wow, two critical chances. Just wouldn't fall for the young man. And then a... Sand Devil whistle after Yuzi got the rebound. Bryce Williams is done. It's Bryce's fifth. He has to check out after a valiant effort. That young man played his heart out. Got to talk with Bryce. He was our player of the game. I think Bryce is just a sophomore. If memory serves me. We got to talk to him after he picked up our player of the game in a Sand Devil victory just a few days ago. When they beat the Alta State Falcons, Bryce was our player of the game. 40 to 36, the Mustangs 
playing for a return trip to the 3A North Region Championship game. Boy, these teams. <laughs> the Mustangs, before that miss right there, were 7 of 7 in the fourth quarter. And miss again. Wow, two big misses to go along with the big misses on the other side. Jackson Smith just stepped out of bounds. Turn it back over to Monument Valley. The Sand Devil fans, little heartbreak right there. And there's that step back. Got that back heel in the blue. Can't do it. Back to it. Inside, Red House. Dump pass. And the shot is good. Wow. Count it. And the foul from Latrell Begay. That was a hard-working basket by Latrell. And a huge one. Some insurance here with 34 seconds left. Look at inside. Got to go under. Somehow get it up there. And the, uh, and the foul committed by Talon Herter. 42-36. It's going to bang off there. No good. Latrell hadn't made a lot of shots today, but I tell you, the ones that he's made have, have been important. And after an offensive rebound by Talon Herter, Flores knocks it out of bounds. 42 to 36, 22 seconds remaining. Mustangs won the 3A North Region Tournament last year. And that's, they call the, the, the region champion as the team that wins the tournament, not the regular season winner. See what the officials decide out of this. They're going to decide that that's a foul on the Sand Devils, who did not appreciate the call. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why there's any argument about that. Talon Herter. The only thing he didn't do there was ask the guy for his wallet. And that's it. I mean, he's, he's given everything he can to, to, to help try and win the game for his team, but it was a mugging in, pro in progress. There's your insurance right there. It is an eight-point game. There's a three-possession game. Eight seconds left. The Mustangs are going to return to the 3A North Region Championship game tomorrow. That will be played at 5 o'clock in the afternoon right here at Window Rock. Congratulations to the Monument Valley Mustangs. Randolph Gilmore has guided his team back to the region championship game after a three seed in the, in the regular season. A, a team that just played better and better and better as the season went along. And our Sports Zone player of the game, presented by White Mountain Regional Medical Center, is Yazil Flores. A unanimous decision with our production team. Flores scored 18 points. Musi a couple of threes in the game. And uh, he was a highlight reel today, wasn't he? He gave us a lot of material. And uh, showing some love with Ty Tyree Stingley. Those two guys mixed it up a lot today, didn't they? And uh, nothing but love when it's all said and done. Musi. Stepping out of the shadow of his big brother, Roberto Flores. With style. Great job. I don't know that we're going to get a chance to talk to Flores. Maybe. maybe We certainly won't before a visit to the locker room. So we don't necessarily count on a, a, uh, a visit. But we'll, we'll see if that happens here. Uh, meanwhile, take a look at some highlights in this one. That guy right there, Tyree Stingley defensively laying out for that, that ball, trying to get it. Tyree gave everything he had to give. He fouled out with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in regulation. Today, it belonged to Monument Valley. They did a great job to build the lead and keep the lead throughout the game. And they played so well. They played like veterans down the stretch. There's Latrell Begay. He gave his, gave his team some supreme efforts. Call out Kerry Nash for a great game. Kerry finished with seven points. Played a terrific game. Monument Valley, good team win. Ralph Gray was terrific in the win. Nine points for him. Jaden Redhouse, six points for him. And he, he scored all of his points in the fourth quarter. Jaden was critical down the stretch for 
This victory for Monument Valley. Terrific game, and the player of the game is Uziel Flores with 18 points. On the other side, the Sand Devils, high point man was Tyree Stingley, 11 points. Great Mustang defense to limit him. Eight points in the game for Max Reed, eight points for Talon Herter, four points for Jackson Smith, three points for Bryce Williams, and two points for Joey Benali. Foul trouble in that late in the game really plagued the Sand Devils. So the championship for the boys will play tomorrow at 5 o'clock here in Window Rock. We'll broadcast that for you. Monument Valley is there, and they will play either Chin Lee or Ganado. We'll find out who the opponent will be later on today. Final game today at 7.30 will be Chin Lee versus Ganado in a boys game. Coming up in a few moments, the Page Lady Sand Devils will take on Monument Valley, number two versus number three in the seating here in the semifinals. Be professional. I'm being told by Leroy Thomas to be a professional. Stay professional over here. I got a, I got a bunch of text messages like the, the, the professor. The professor. Yes, you're the professor. We just got to find you some. We got to find you some wire glasses. Some. Yes, you need a a, a pen protector, a pencil protector. I'm talking to Leroy Thomas, one of the officials. I have dubbed him the professor. Okay, I've given him a nickname and. It seems to be sticking. That'll look like we're going to get a chance to talk to our player of the game, folks. So we will wrap up our broadcast of this one in the uh, 3A North Region Tournament semifinals. And that was a great game out there, wasn't it? Congratulations to Monument Valley, their head coach, Randolph Gilmore. What a terrific job holding and getting the lead, holding the lead, advancing to the title game here in the tournament. 44-36 final score. Monument Valley over the Page Sand Devils. Coming up next, a semifinal girls game. The number one seeded Page Sand Devils about set to face the four seed, the Chin Lee Lady Wildcats. Our production team, Derek Simmons, our producer. Our technical director, that's Julio K. And operating camera in this one, Leonard Keone for the entire crew. Floyd Simmons, thank you for joining us, saying God bless you, everybody, and we'll return to Winter Rock for this upcoming girls game in a moment. Look for the broadcast up next right here at the Sports Zone. Coverage provided by Choice, NTUA Wireless. Stand by for the next game, everybody.